Welcome back, guys, to another episode. Christian Beyer coming to you from the Fabic Caterpillar dealership shop here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So today, I'd like to go over my toolbox, some of the pros and cons. Obviously, as you know, if you've watched any of my last videos, um, I have an 84-inch Epic, the 84-inch Hutch, and a side locker. I've had them for in use just about a nine month period now. I ordered it back in March and then got it within a few months after that. So a uh, little bit of background if you haven't picked it up in my past videos. Um, I obviously work in Caterpillar dealership shop and in this shop uh, machines come in and out and the repairs take a significant amount of time. Sometimes they sit without being worked on just due to you know, parts availability or customer decisions, things like that. So a lot of times machines come in and they'll take up a bay for, you know, a month at a time. And we might work on it for a week or two and then move on to something else. So we're always moving around, unlike an auto shop where you, for the most part, have your toolbox in a single spot and don't really ever move it. Uh, a lot of those guys will use roll carts and move around. Uh, some of us use roll carts as well uh, and then try to move our big box a little less. but. As of right now, I don't have a roll cart yet. Um, I used to, and then obviously I moved into this and traded everything in for this. So um, eventually that is the plan to get back to a roll cart. But for now, I am rolling this big box between all the bays and um, that will never really go away. We can eliminate it a little bit um, by getting the roll cart in the future. But uh, for now, the only, um, the only solution for me is to move this every time I move to a different job. So. Obviously, that being said, it is big, it is heavy. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked what the weight is on it actually, and I don't know for sure, but um, it does have to be moved a lot. And that kind of brings me into my first con about this box. The wheels on it, obviously on these Epics, they made them so that you can release all, all the wheels and uh, rotate them um, you know, all the way around with that grenade pin that holds them in place. And I see where that'd be a really nice feature for some guys wanting to push it up against the wall or something like that. And um, I have no, no problem with that feature. My only problem is that my rear two wheels on the, on the locker, obviously the opposite end of where my handle is, um, the best solution I've found is to only have one of those wheels locked because if you have both of them locked, and obviously the wheel is following off center, if that makes sense, um, pulling it is not an issue as long as you're dragging the, the wheel uh, behind center. But once you have to push it into place or maneuver it around, if you start pushing it ahead of center, it actually starts um, misaligning itself and it's flexing the whole bottom of the box and popping, trying for both to have both wheels aligned as you're moving it. Um, I did try running it like that for a while. Um, and it just wasn't working out. So now I only have the one corner uh, wheel locked straight. And that's on the very end of the box. Obviously I have six sets of casters. Now the biggest issue um, that I have to be real careful of with that is our floors are obviously all sloped into the center slightly for drainage. And as you're moving around different corners and stuff like that, you might come across a spot that, you know, the center is a little higher than the, the two ends and obviously that turns into a dangerous situation to have the box start sliding sideways. It's only happened once to me. Uh, it wasn't too big of a deal. Um, most of the time when I do move this, I do have another guy on the other end of the box just to make sure that it doesn't start sliding or something like that. Um, but it's just a little issue that I'm not really sure how it could be resolved, but it's something that kind of bugs me a little bit and I wanted to point out. Uh, moving on to the next, these wrench drawers, as you're pulling them out on one end, this standard drawer does a little more, well now it's not going to do it here. Well, the point is, these wrench drawers like to bind up sometimes. Um, because they're long and they do flex, you can kind of see that as I'm moving it in and out. It's not binding too bad. But occasionally, if you're pulling on one end, it seems like one of the uh, slides likes to bind up a little more than the other. 
and it's not too big a deal. I don't, I don't think that it threatens, you know, the, the load of the, you know, the weight or anything like that. Um, I don't think that threatens the drawer, but it is a little irritating just that there's not much rigidity in the slide side to side or, uh, you know, up and down is obviously the most important We're right there. That's binding up. And that just irritates me at no end that these slides are not strong enough to be able to, you know, keep their alignment going straight forward. Just kind of show that's literally jammed up on that side when I'm pulling on this end of it. And their big boast, Snap-on's big boast, is that with these drawers and this, this retention system, you are able to grab it at either end and pull the drawer out without having issues. Now, obviously that's not the case with this drawer and it's really kind of disappointing that it binds up. So that's, that's where it binds up. It's right at the end of that slide, where that slide, the two pieces of the slide start coming apart. Most of the time, it's not too big of an issue, um, mostly because I just grab the drawer right in the center and pull it out. But occasionally, it does. I do notice it. I'll be standing over here in front of my computer and I'll reach down and grab my drawer, pull it out, and it starts binding up. And that just irritates me. Um, you know, I spend so much money on this box and it, you know, the slides are just not, not that they're not strong, not that they won't last, but they're just, that side to side movement just, like I said, is frustrating. So. Um, another, another thing that a lot of other guys have pointed out along the lines of the drawers is the soft close. Now, personally, I don't really mind the, the banging of them closed. You know, I, I think it sounds cool and just, it, you know, whatever, it's unique. But I do have to say that a soft close feature, I think, would probably be better for the box. And, you know, it would keep my tools from sliding around, and that is one thing that I've noticed is that they do slide around and I'm gonna get a little more in depth of that in a second, but soft clothes would have definitely been a nice feature. Um, another thing with the drawers that I really dislike is with this flat paint, the drawer liners slide in the bottom of the drawers. I noticed that right away when I got it and I was organizing it, every time I'd close it, the whole liner and all the tools would slide forward and extremely badly and it would do it immediately. Like they, the mats have no traction on this flat paint. So what I ended up doing is uh, using spray adhesive and I sprayed my liners and then I installed them all. So they don't slide anymore or very, very little, but that's just another thing that I wish they would have seen in the research and building these boxes is figuring out a way that they could um, keep those liners in place, you know, I've said it already once, but as much money as we spend on these boxes, you would think that little things like that are things that would be picked up on um, and dealt with. So uh, as far as the drawers go, I think those are my biggest pet peeves with them. Um, I do want to point out that the drawer system, the, one of the big reasons I bought this box was because of this detention system. Honestly, I don't think I could handle having a Matco box again. That. Um, didn't have this de detent system. Uh, I just really, really like how this works. And that was a big, big reason buying this box. So along the lines of drawers, another real big irritation for me is the fact that they couldn't incorporate some sort of detent system like this into the locker drawers. These drawers are obviously really heavy. Uh, some of these drawers I keep my bottle jacks on, my 20 ton bottle jacks, um, ass loads of air tools, um, and you know, big port power stuff. So because of the angles of the floor, if I don't park the box in the right direction, uh, a lot of times uh, I'll go to open my locker door and they all slide out. And um, I just, obviously the solution is to not park it in those, in those spots that it allows it to do it. But it's just an irritating thing because even just rolling it across the shop, I've found that uh, there's times when if I don't lock the locker door, when I roll it across the shop, they roll out and push the door open. So that's a big irritation for me. Um, the other thing along the lines of the locker is the magnets. And 
the opening of the door is just incredibly difficult if you keep all three of these magnets in. And I played with it. I did it in all three, or you know, how many ever different orientations I could have done it in, um, pulling these magnets out just to keep one or two in. And what I found worked the best for me was keeping two in, the center one and the lower one, because I always grip it right above the center one to open it. So it opens nice, it stays closed. Um, it, you know, it opens a lot better than with three magnets in it. And um, that was my solution for that. My other gripe about the locker, if you see this red bungee cord down here, they do not have a suspension system for this door. And that really boggles my mind that they were not able to put in uh, some sort of gas shock or even have a kit that a gas shock you could put in here. Uh, honestly, I don't think it would have been that difficult. I thought about doing one myself. For now, I just have the bungee cord. I know a lot of other guys have bungee cords like that too. But it's one of those things, again, I mean, this is a $5,000 locker and, you know, uh, not having that gas shock on there allows for the door to slam open into something, you know, open too far or even slam and close. So, um, you know, this bungee cord keeps it from swinging too far open or whatever. And, you know, I just have to pay attention. I don't let it slam close. But that's kind of my gripes about the locker. So moving forward with my complaints, um, the other thing that really is an issue for me is this flat paint when it gets scratched. Uh, I've had a couple of scratches in it, a couple of things happen around here in the shop with everything moving, things do happen. And it is beyond irritating to me and really angers me when things happen. But, uh, the issue that I see in this paint is the fact that when this flat paint, you know, this powder coat scratches, it turns really light colored. Uh, at least in this combat green, obviously I can't speak to the other colors, but you know, it's, and the issue is that when you go to paint over it or, you know, touch it up, it's not ever going to look near the same that it ever did before. And so, um, I don't know what their solution for making it more durable or something is, and I don't know, maybe it's just being too nitpicky. Well, I don't think it is being too nitpicky just because I spent so much money on this box, but um, obviously the solution is to be more careful with it, just like anything else. I mean, things are gonna get damaged and things are gonna happen. It's pretty hard to prevent all that, but um, you know, the little scratches, they do bug me, and uh, it bugs me that it's so obvious once it happens. So. You know, there's a lot of negative things about this box that guys point out. There's a lot of videos like don't buy a snap on Epic or whatever. Um, and even for myself, like I'm doing a video on the negative things, but I also want to do it about the positive things. There is no other box like this on the market. Yes, you pay an absolute premium for this box and that's part of it. There's no, I don't think that there's that much extra value in it, but you are paying for the name and you're paying for that premium product and the reputation that they have. Obviously, they need to be mindful as a company um, that they're producing tools and uh, boxes that hold up that reputation. Otherwise, you know, obviously, they won't have a reputation and a uh, market uh, willing to pay those prices. But at this point, they are obviously doing very successful as a company, and there's a reason for it. And I think that it is the, the quality that they provide. Um, like I said, is it worth that money? No, it's not worth that money in value but to me it's worth that money uh, to have the name the reputation the pride in owning these tools in this toolbox it's worth it to me um, I will never argue that the value is there um, for you know the broad spectrum of their products but um, in specific situations yes it might be and uh, you know there are a lot of other tool toolbox brands out there that build quality toolboxes and I have no doubt have the support out there. Uh, they just don't have the reputation and they don't bring me the pride in owning them. You know, there's something about owning something like a snap on Epic that's just uh, a feeling like no other. And so, you know, that's that's what I purchased and this is a passion of mine. And at the end of the day, I don't think anyone should be ridicule, ridiculed for what they spend their money on. It's their money and they make their own choices and they deal with their consequences. So, um, 
that's just the nature of life and uh, I hate to see guys get ripped down for how they spend their money but you know at the end of the day it's it's pointless to, uh, to argue with that so I don't think there's ever a reason to make an argument for the value um, being worth the price but uh, the pride it brings me is worth it and this is something I enjoy and uh, I'm going to enjoy for a long time so uh, as far as the pros of this box I mean it's heavier and more durable and thicker metal and it holds more tools than anything else that I've seen on the market and I um, I truly believe this thing will last a lifetime uh, especially with the warranty they provide on their slides um, I have no doubt that this that I'll have this box for a lifetime alright guys so that's what I have for you today uh, I just wanted to make a quick video and go over these things um, you know, I hope you took something out of this. I don't know if it affects your decisions on buying an Epic or not, but uh, I appreciate you watching. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button. Thanks again, Christian Beyer signing out.